Hi, I'm Alex Bass. Welcome to my West Village apartment. I'm the founder of Salon 21, an interior design firm and art advisory. So right when you walk in, you'll see I have a really renter-friendly solution up here on my walls. I have this gold iridescent wallpaper that's actually from Target, which is peel and stick. So you can really do this in any space and protect your walls when you move out. This is the entryway. This is a mid-century modern Lorinda Spear bench that I sourced from Chicago. One of my favorite pieces in my apartment is this convex mirror that actually came from my parents' home. I love having as many mirrors as possible in a small space because it makes them feel a lot bigger. And and this also functions as more of an art piece because of the convex nature of it. And I offset it here with some artwork. I have a painting here by a friend of mine, Scott Young, and then a watercolor and a print by artist Andy Dinkin. So because I share the apartment with my boyfriend, we each needed an area to work from home. So here's my little desk nook area. I had to find a desk that really just fit perfectly in this little space. I sourced these great vintage barbershop chairs actually that pump up and down depending on the height that you need them. <laughs> and then of course shelves for knickknacks and my film cameras and other stationary needs. Another fun renter hack are these light switch covers from John Darian that add a little more intrigue to basic things in your space. And then something that I always get asked about is switching out light fixtures. You can really do this in any apartment. Those sort of blob lights that most landlords put in their spaces can just be easily switched out by an electrician. And then once you move out, you can take your beautiful light fixture with you. into the apartment before we rented it I noticed there was no overhead light in here but that shouldn't be an issue because what you can do is get something called a swag light it just plugs into an outlet you can just drill a hook into the ceiling and then you have light that you know illuminates your living room space Here's my surprisingly comfortable Mario Bellini sofa. And I have the two end pieces in my studio apartment. And what I really love about a piece like this is that because it's modular, it can live with you in many different spaces. So I added the centerpiece and the ottoman once we moved in here and had a bit more space to hang out in the living room. And now we could really fit, I don't know, we've had up to maybe 10, 12 people crammed on the sofa. <laughs> when I moved in with my boyfriend, he said one thing was no pink. And so we very much opted for a neutral palette and let our art and knickknacks and pillows bring in the color. And so with the couch, I opted for a neutral off-white cream color. So I'm sure you've seen this framed TV a lot. And the reason why I did invest in it is because in small spaces, the TV can really be an eyesore. And it also helped me create a bit of a gallery wall moment here with some photographs I've taken and lithographs. And then depending on our mood, we can change the artwork on the TV itself. And I also chose black and white photographs and artwork to put around it to not detract from what you're watching on TV. <laughs> Here's our larger gallery wall, and I think the key with these is to really bring the art up as close to the molding as possible to make the space feel bigger. And we really played around with the layout of it and then figured out a good way to incorporate both my boyfriend and I's artwork. This is actually a photograph he took, which we need to get reprinted and framed. But around it, we have a mix of paintings, prints, drawings. So I always also say, try to mix the media on the walls for more visual intrigue. One of my favorite pieces in the apartment is this two-piece bar that I sourced on First Jibs, and I actually picked it up in my car from Connecticut. We met the owner. It was a really great story to meet, you know, vintage seller from, from the website in person. It's filled with things that my boyfriend and I have collected from our travels, some shot glasses from Mexico City, a melting disco ball by Kelly Wurstler, fun cocktail napkins. And again, it's a great way to display knickknacks you have. And it's also very practical because during COVID, we really got into making cocktails and now we have a central place to do them and also um, to entertain. 
Because this space is so long and narrow, we wanted to sort of create different spaces within the living room. So we call this the library. <laughs> we put a nice Ames chair here where the lighting comes in real nice and you can pick a book off of the bookshelf and sit down and read. This bookshelf I sourced from ABC Carpet when they were doing a big clearance sale and it is filled with coffee table books, novels, knickknacks again, um, and it's a nice focal point for the room as well. And then we have a mid-century modern floor lamp here that I sourced from Etsy with a cool little magazine rack built into it that I love. Putting together this room was really fun. It was almost like a jigsaw puzzle. I had the bookshelf. I knew I wanted to get a bar to display the glassware. And so just sort of figuring out where everything fit was a bit of a challenge. And then I think seeing it come together was the best part and that everything really has its place and has its own standalone moment. best use of this small space right off of my kitchen. I opted for a banquette, which is a great way to save space and also entertain. We can squeeze a lot of people in here. And then I have two chairs flanking it. Have another little gallery wall moment here, some accessories. I'm always into getting dried, fresh flowers, really just livens up the space. And here's another chandelier that I actually sourced from Etsy. And again, my biggest recommendation in any rental is change out as many light fixtures as you can to really make the space feel personal and to also bring in that warm lighting rather than that harsh, cool fluorescent lighting that I think really hinders your mood in the space. This area is a built-in. I opted to paint this part to make it look like a standalone piece and it acts as another way for me to display some barware. I drilled in these wine racks that I got just off Amazon. And it's a great way to, again, display glasses, but also keep them clean because it keeps the dust out. So there you go. Then you just pour yourself a glass of wine. space and also an older apartment. A lot of the coloring, the floors, everything was this like dark cherry color. And I wanted to honor that, but in the kitchen, I felt like I needed to feel lighter, more open, fresher. So we did paint the cabinets white, changed out the hardware, and I actually also redid the backsplash. I use my kitchen a lot. Again, another fun space to entertain. And so this was a bit of an investment, but again, painting, changing hardware, all really simple things that you can do and your landlord should let you do. My advice for someone moving into a small space in the city in a white box apartment is that when you first move in, it's actually gonna look a lot smaller without furniture than it does once you furnish it. So you might be overwhelmed by what you have coming into it and knowing you wanna add additional things to the space. So start playing around with what looks good where before you decide on a final layout. And then you can consult someone like myself to sort of help you add those extra touches to your space design wise and also finding small space solutions for organization and general interior design. So thank you for checking out my space. You can follow me and see more of my designs at salon.21 on Instagram and feel free to reach out, contact me for any design help. Small spaces are definitely my specialty and I'd love to help you with yours.